Greetings everybody, I am Mr. Wildcat, coming back for another random episode review of Married with Children. Now the last time we met, we reviewed the proposition, which was the 26th and final episode of season 7. Today we are going to be going back just a little bit behind the proposition, we're going to review another classic episode from season 7. This time it is Peggy and the Pirates. Okay, another one of my favorite episodes out of season seven, and there's a lot to talk about. So let's get started, shall we? Now, basically, this episode um, it was recorded on February nineteenth, nineteen ninety-three, and aired just nine days later on February twenty-eighth. In this episode, this is the it, we see the last of seven. Okay, yay! So basically, uh, Seven comes into Al and Peggy's bedroom, wanting Peggy to read him a bedtime story. Al doesn't appreciate Seven in the room, so he winds up going to the toilet during the whole episode. And basically, uh, Peggy's trying to find something to read to him, going through her nightstand. He, she, she, all she can find are, some, are, are a bunch of graphic novel, uh, graphic romance novels that are way too inappropriate for Seven. And then we also come across her vibrator. <laughs> Man, Peggy, what you are such a character there. <laughs> so anyway, um, she, f she comes across another um, book uh, about pirates. That comes the, the, the that's the closest that she can come to reading seven that is considered appropriate. So basically, the roman uh, the, the the novel is basically about a princess called Princess Scarlet, which is played by Peggy. And then we also oh, she is taken captive by Captain Courage, which is played by Al. And on a ship, okay, we see first mate Flavio, a hunchback played by Bud, where he basically, um, he is so perverted and so ugly looking that women on the ship would rather jump to their deaths in the sharks infested oceans than to make out with him. And then we also have Kelly, who winds up playing the ship's navigator. She doesn't really have an official name now. Okay. So basically, so a few minutes comes through, and then we wind up, um, and then they come across a ship in which another famous character jumps on, Jefferson, who plays, who plays Princess Scarlet's savior, Prince Paco, with his long, gorgeous hair, and of course, Prince Paco is sitting there having to groom it. <laughs> He would rather have nice beauty hair than to let the wind ruin it. Okay. Also on Al's ship, all right, is probably my favorite character out of the whole episode, played by Marcy, which is the cabin boy girl. <laughs> this was so fun. <laughs> and then eventually, the ship um, basically crashes into another. It happens to be. Rubio the Cruel, played by Steve Rhodes himself. Okay. Now, David Garrison, when he, he left the show halfway through season four because he wanted to go back to the musical theater. He missed it, but he's been missing it ever since the show started, and he wanted to go back to it. And episodes like this, and The Egg and I, and a few others in season nine, basically, it gave uh, Steve the op it gave David Garrison the opportunity to come back and reprovise his role as Steve. Okay, but basically, his role in this episode, he plays the supervillain. He is not only uh, here to take uh, to seize Princess Scarlet, but he's also going to. Kill, print, uh, kill Captain Courage in the process. Okay? Captain Courage basically uh, winds up in a sword fight with Captain, I mean, Captain Courage and 
Rubio the Cruel. They wind up in a sword fight. And just as Al's about to um, win it all, BING! A boxing match. It, it, it turns into a boxing match where they basically wind up taking a seat on the opposite sides of the ship. A beautiful woman comes across with a big sign that says, Round 2. BING! And then they're back at it again. They wind up uh, fighting day in and day out. Especially when they're sitting there eating at the dinner table. Okay? And then comes one of the best lines out of the entire episode. Um, let's see if I can come across it. Come on, come on, come on. I had it right here. Oh, let's see. Other one over here. Okay. Uh, here we go. <laughs> You're making me look... Okay, so here's Al. You're making me look bad in front of my woman. And then Steve, at least she doesn't have to stare at the bits of corn in your teeth. That corn is my teeth. For that, you will die. You fool. I was taught to fight by the greatest teachers in the finest schools in Europe. Oh, yeah? Well, I was taught how to fight in the streets. And then Captain Courage winds up kneeing Rubio in the groin. And that is the end of Rubio. Ru Rubio the Cruel. Captain Courage winds up winning over Princess Scarlet. And as the novel comes, and as the story comes to an end, Seven falls asleep and Peggy gets turned on. She says, Okay, Seven, go back to bed. And that's the last we ever see of him. And while he's running off to bed, Peggy goes into the bathroom while Al's trying to fix the toilet. Take me, Captain Courage! Who? No! <laughs> this was a pretty fun episode. Okay, let's take a look at some of my favorite moments, some of my notable favorite moments in uh, this particular episode. Okay, so first we have Rubio the Cruel, who's entering, who uh, makes his way onto the ship for the first time. Men, hide your women. Women, hide your heinies. For I'll bring you the unique musical styling of Rubio the Cruel. Rubets, and basically, um, we wind up seeing a musical montage. So basically, he starts off with the Pirate King, which was, um, which comes from the Gilbert and Sullivan musical, The Pirates of Penzance. And following that, he sings another song from The Pirates of Penzance called "I Am the Very Model of a Mu Modern." It's a brain. It's a tongue twister. Okay, try it again. I am the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> Told you it was a tongue twister. And then he winds up singing the trolley song by Judy Garland. And then as he's about to disarm um, Princess Scarlet, Peggy, he winds up singing a wandering minstrel, which is from another Gilbert and Sullivan opera called The Mikado. And speaking of the Mikado, that episode, that um, particular opera was also uh, referenced in, in a season four episode, Dead Men Don't Do Aerobics. Al and Steve wind up going to see the opera, the Mikado, while Marcy and Peggy wind up making out, by the way, they wind up exercising to Jim Jupiter, the healthiest man in Chicago. But that's another episode for another day. Okay? And then we probably have the best line of all, okay, in which um, it's an exchange between Jefferson and Marcy's characters, okay? So you have P Prince Paco and the cabin boy girl, okay? And that's basically okay. Oh, I am smitten with that boyish kitten. Ahoy, cabin boy. I am strangely attracted to you and your dubious sexuality. And I to you and your easy, pretty boy matter. So let me remove all doubt and prove to you that I am no boy. How? Look closer, you idiot! <laughs> and that was not all. When Rubio the Cruel has tied Al and Peggy's characters to get, uh, up together on the ship. Cabin boy girl, show Captain Courage your bosoms! 
And then Cabin Boy and Girl, she winds up flashing her shirt in front of Alan and gets him so deranged, he basically gets loose from his tie-up in order to take on Ruby the Cruel. <laughs> so these were some pretty good episodes. Now, this was a very this was a very fun episode overall, and the reason part of the reason why this is my favorite is because um, aside from the fact that we this, this is the last time we ever have to see Seven, and we'll never see him again after this episode. Okay, aside from that, it also reunites the entire cast together, and we even have Steve, who makes a return. David Garrison, who is a huge presence in the musical theater, he gets to show his musical talents on this particular appearance. Okay, and also you get to see them all playing uh, playing um, exaggerate roles in a fantasy story. The pirate ship was also um, one of the best sets that the show has ever had. Now, basically. Um, a quick trivia fact, in Season 9, there was a special episode called My Favorite Married. You had um, Al Pegg, Bud Kelly, Jefferson, and Marcy, the, 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 the stars that played all six of those characters. They made a special appearance, and they basically uh, got to share some of their favorite moments and favorite episodes of the show's history. One of Jefferson's favorite episodes was this one right here. And he basically said that the pirate ship was one of the best sets that they'd ever had. And I absolutely loved the characters in this story. P uh, Kelly's clueless navigation, the cabin boy girl with her bisexuality, Rubio the Cruel and his singing talents, Prince Paco grooming his hair like he's a no good boy gigolo. And then you also have Al up to his no good. There's also another uh, quick trivia fact that we like to bring up in this episode. Now, basically, there is a reference to, um, let's see if I can pop it up here. Yeah, he made notes. Uh, there we go. So, basically, there's, a, um, there's basically a, a reference about Peggy um, ordering pizza for the pizza. The Domino's Pizza Ship and making a wise act crack. 30 days or less, my ass. That was pretty funny right there. Now, basically, um, I'm too young to remember this, but there is a cultural reference for those of you. So, for those of you who don't know, I'm going to explain what's going on. So, Domino's at one point had a 30 minute guarantee where your pizza would be delivered to your house within 30 minutes of placing your order. Um, and if you did not make it in 30 days, and if it did not, if that pizza did not show up within 30 minutes of that order being placed, the pizza was free in the house. Now, unfortunately, there was a shitload of uh, delivery drivers that were getting very reckless and getting into accidents, and they were having to do this j in order to meet the deadline. And basically, Domino's eventually dropped that guarantee the same year that this episode aired. Okay. And one of the and one of the uh, notorious uh, another reference to this particular one would be in season four's "You Got to Know When to Fold Them" part one. Al orders a pizza for Bud, Kelly, and himself, and he pays with a credit card and says, "You know, I swiped a hearse in order to get this pizza to you in 22 minutes." Okay. <laughs> okay. So basically, with all of this, uh, with that particular reference right there. There is no um, question in my mind that that was actually dropped. And in a way, I'm glad it did because it promoted safe, um, it did provide, pr promote safe driving uh, at the very least. So there is, uh, let's see, I've never seen Hook, so I don't want to be able to see this. Um, so, okay. I think that's all we're going to talk about pegging the pirate. So let's go through my rating. Now, Everything I have to say about this episode I've already mentioned, okay? The set was ex the set was explicit. All of the characters played a very good role. It is the last time we have to see Seven. We also got the special appearance by Steve and he and this is probably there are four episodes that uh, Steve Rhodes uh, makes a comeback in after his departure in season 4. The first one was in season 6 is The Egg and I second one was this episode, Peggy and the Pirates. And then we also see two episodes in Season 9, 
get the dodge out of hell and which was the t which is supposed to be the episodes 200 uh, the show's 200th episode or was supposed to be and then we also had uh, Radio Free Tremaine, which was one of the failed attempted spin-off episodes. But this one has to be the best episode that's, uh, that David Garrison made after his departure from the show. So when you put everything into play, there is no question in my mind that this episode is going to receive a 5 out of 5. Okay? So that's all we have for today. And... If you guys have a specific episode of Married Children that you would like me to review, drop the comments down below. Don't forget to hit the like, the like button and subscribe to my channel for further reviews. Until next time we meet, I'm Mr. Wildcat, reminding each and every one of you to be good, be careful, and behave. Whoa, Bundy!